All right, this is another video, and this time we're going to do a Mer Mercury Atlas free play, but with no failures, random failures in here. And we'll uh, explore some things in here and during the mission. But what I'll also do is edit out some of the parts. But I think we'll go through a full uh, T minus five minutes through launch and then ascent and I'll switch. James Temple, have a good flight. Reach out if there is anything you need. Sorry, that's Capcom. They just like to talk to me. So we're at T minus five minutes. Let's bring up the T minus five minute checklist. All the other checklists have been done. So this switch to ready. I'm going to do a radio check. Guess what? You'll be able to hear them. James Temple, we read you 5x5 five five on UHF. I hope that's not blasting everybody out. Um, I don't have that adjusted. They won't be talking much anymore. So this time zero button, I'm going to remove the cover. If the mission clock does not start, that's the thing that's highlighted here in yellow, right at liftoff, I hit that. It's to start the elapsed time clock, which is very important because everything from the mission is tied to the elapsed time. Now I'm going to switch the battery to monitor battery 1, arm the firing squibs, arm the auto jettison. And we do that because if I have an abort, we need to have that retro pack immediately uh, jettison from the vehicle. We don't want to land with a solid pack full of solid rocket fuel on the tail end of the missile, uh, tail end of the capsule. That would be very bad. So, I don't know how well you can see that clock up at the upper left. Underneath the 9.44 a.m. time to launch is 3 minutes and 20 seconds. That's the time we'll be kind of looking at um, as we go along here. Uh, this will probably be the last time I'll run through this, and like I said, I'll probably edit out some of the parts of it so it, it's not as long. But I'm going to accelerate the clock right now. The clock will write them down to, as you just saw there, 14 seconds, 13 seconds. Bring up the ascent checklist. There we go. Oops, I did it wrong. There we go. Run. All right. Umbilical disconnect. Roger, the clock is operating. We're yeah, on our way. And my clock is running. Loud and clear. Roger, we're programming and roll OK. A little bumping along about here. Clock is operational. Stand by for 20 seconds. Roger. Two, one, mark. Shh. Audio for. Here we go. Turn some of the cockpit sounds down. I don't have any music on. Oh, Mitch, here we go. Mission Control Calm. Let's turn that down a little bit. Keep blowing us out of here. Here we go. Alright, so we've gone through that. The clock's running. Now we're monitoring the board and warning lights. And since I have no failures uh, enabled, we shouldn't see any failures. So now the cabin pressure is going down. Oops, again. Sorry for the jerky camera. Here it is. So now we're just looking for the Beco checklist. Back. Beco. Run. And you'll notice when you add another checklist, it adds it onto it. It doesn't replace the one you have up there. So. The sequencer, that's that line of lights on that I'm highlighting right now with a cursor that starts with jet tower all the way down to landing bag, are lights that indicate the sequencer, the thing I told you about that's like a uh, dishwasher sequencer, the old-timey dishwasher sequencer. So we are waiting for Pico, which is the boosters here at the bottom of the picture. You see there's three of the three engine firing. The outside two engines will shut off 
and then the bottom section of the rocket. There it goes. We'll eject. Now we'll go back inside. We're ready and ready to jettison the tower. We'll go outside so you can see it. Watch for it. Watch for it. Takes 20 seconds. So it's not quite there. There it goes. Yeah, I hope you caught that. That was fast. So we'll go back inside. So, auto jettison. We'll turn off. We'll turn off the circuit breaker. And we'll turn off the circuit breaker for the emergency retro jettison. You do not want to jettison your retros down. We're going to start the Seco checklist. Single engine cutoff. So all we're waiting for now is the capsule to separate. I'll probably edit this out because it's several minutes of staring at the screen. Like this. But let me show you something cool while we're doing this. There's really nothing I can do right now. I'm going to show you nighttime mode. This is really cool. Turn on the red lights. Close the shutters. Require a little electric clicks there with the mouse. And that's how I sleep. We could even turn the lights off entirely, but I don't want to do that one during ascent. But there's a button down here. Here it is. Cabin lights. See, there you go. Oops, it's dark all of a sudden. Except for that little bit of light coming in. But I do have a flashlight. So, that's the left hand light. I can turn it on separately. But we'll switch back to normal lights. And we'll turn the filters off. And we'll open the shutters. Alright. Let's find out how high we are. We'll ask for an altitude check from... We see you at 92.5 NMI. That's about the altitude we expect to be at. So let's go outside again. We're waiting for the rocket to quit firing. And you notice, for those of you who like Kerbal Space Program, there it is. And we've separated it. Now, unlike Kerbal Space Program, we don't blast and separate. We slowly separate. And the reason that we're turning, we'll go inside, is our thrusters are firing. And we're attaining what's called the big end forward position. Or butt end forward, if you're not on the uh, live Capcom. Oh, you can hear a booster firing there. See? And what we're trying to do is position ourselves so that we are facing backwards and tilted down slightly. That's the attitude you'll be in when we fire retros. And there's the booster still following us. But let's go inside and do something different here. We're going to show how I can manually operate the thrusters. But to do that, we have to be careful not to tumble to the gyros. There are three gyroscopes that run in a Mercury, and they have a certain range. They can go quite a lot of number of degrees left and right, or up and down if it's pitch, or roll left and right for the roll axis, but they can't go all the way around in a circle. If you try to, the gimbal will, it's called tumble. Or, no, I'm sorry, not tumble, it'll go into hard lock. I know this from reading a book. So, to forbid that from happening, we cage gyros. We switch to fly-by-wire. And I pull out this little 
gizmo and now I'm in manual control and it'll use fuel from the manual tank. So let's flip the rocket around. I'm pointing straight down. I passed straight down there. If you look in the center here, you notice how that horizontal kind of orangey line at the, the bottom. That's because I've got too much... I've got all the command in there and I'm rotating really fast. Now we stopped and you can see stars. Now these indicators, the attitude indicators, are reading zero, zero, zero because I have caged the gyros. That's not really the way we're pointing. But I can also, we'll switch out side for this, I can roll the vehicle. Sorry, the, the, of course the, the camera is fixed to the vehicle, so you don't really see it rolling. You see the everything else rolling. And now we'll go back inside. and show you how to get out of this situation. But first we'll use some more fuel up. See the, the arrows going over on the attitude rate indicator here? And you can see the stars go by. Well, maybe you can't. It's kind of hard to see them. There they are. And there's the Earth. Now, I've just done a lot of commanding and we're going in various directions. And let's really mess ourselves up. We'll roll in on all three axes. This should be fun. And if I step outside and look, this is what it looks like. Now this is a messy situation. And you'll notice all of the three needles on that set center square indicator are way off. So what we have to do is fire thrusters to bring them in to the center. Yep. Now fire thruster again for the pitch. That's the horizontal orange looking thing. And stop it. And now roll. We do the same thing. There we go. And magically, we are no longer tumbling wildly in space. Now, I know you're asking yourselves, am I wearing clothes or am I naked? Well, right now, I've got clothes on, but I have done these naked. Oh, you want to know how do you get ready for deorbit? Sure, that's a good question. Well, this was something I did not know until I did some research today and then some dumbing around. Once you've locked the gyros up, you have to reset them. And the way you reset them is to put the capsule in a known attitude. And the known attitude is with the big end forward. And how do I know it is? If I don't switch the camera outside. The periscope sees the Earth, and when I'm in the proper attitude, the Earth fills the periscope. So we'll do a little firing of retros and I'm, I'm I know you can't see it because you can't see my fingers here I'm firing all three directions and see I have done it is I've got the surface centered but you there's one other thing you have to do and that is you have to be pointed the right way and the way you know it's pointed the right way is those clouds should be going from the bottom of the screen towards the top of the screen, paralleling those parallel lines. That's what they're there for. So what we do is we try to take as much motion out of this as possible. And then look which way the clouds are going. They're going from lower right to upper left. So I have to turn a little bit here. 
and then kill the motion. And center the earth again. And it's very hard because I don't have the kind of finite command <coughs> that you would have in a uh, actual controller. I tend to overshoot when I hit the buttons. But you see now, if you look really closely, the clouds are moving from the lower part to the upper part. Oops, we have to be very careful we don't do this. That's a roll command there. Now we're close enough because they have something called a horizon scanner and there's two of them. They look 90 degrees apart. And when you're properly lined up and you turn on the gyros, they will align to the horizon and it'll know that you're in the right attitude. This is this is very tricky. This is like trying to get the little ball in the little hole in that handheld game. Alright, this is going to be close enough, otherwise we can sit here and keep playing with this thing forever. Alright. So we flip the gyro switch to norm. And the gyros will now sync up. We'll take an external look up. And you'll notice that we're kind of in the right position. The clouds are going, we're going tail end forward, so the clouds are going from the top of the screen to the bottom. And it's a little hard to see this way. It's, we're slightly nose down, pitched down. Again, it's not really easy to see. There it is on the horizon. Go back inside. And you see now we're slightly off zero, zero, zero. So we switch over to Norm, and the thrusters will start firing. And see how the manual fuel's down to about 60%? That's where I was burning fuel to do all those maneuvers. The uh, automatic fuel is at about 80%, so we're still in good shape on fuel.